Hi, welcome to Leap Taken. This is Mika, and here at Leap Taken, I talk about all things witchy, craft related, law of attraction, manifesting, esoteric, and everything else in between. So, today I wanted to talk a little bit um, about a subject I technically have touched on before in a video, but I wanted to go a little bit deeper, and that is how practicing magic, practicing witchcraft, calling myself a witch, all of that sort of stuff, how that's changed me over the years. Um, hopefully, if you're doing this human existence right, you're changing anyway. You know, you're not staying the same life. Should, you should be evolving. So how it's changed me for the most part is honestly a little bit more open-mindedness. Not that I would say I was closed off. Aging, you would hope. As you get older, that typically happens. You start to see patterns. You start to see... Um, you know, more, you, hopefully you have an opportunity to, if not have your own experiences, you know, you're witnessing others. So it tends you, for some, you know, if you're a little bit healthy and a, and a balanced person, it'll leave you thinking, hmm, maybe I should try this or maybe I should try that. These people seem to be having success or that person, it seems to be working out for them. So you're open to different experiences, hopefully. Um, what witchcraft has done has basically taken that whole idea and, and just like kick the door and actually there are no doors there's no windows everything's just wide open i am much more open to different ideologies different you know the esoterics um and honestly even on some level the understanding of organized religion and when i mean i'm open to it it doesn't mean i'm practicing or i, I desire to practice but there's an understanding a lot of people practice their chosen religion most likely because that's what they were presented with from children and even if they you know that's always sort of the guideline the, the path and you know they, they may learn other things but that's sort of the um, thing they're constantly comparing everything else to I was one of those people so I'm speaking from experience uh, but at some point I was able to divorce myself of that type of thinking and then just really wipe the slate clean. For me, that's been um, one of the best things that could have ever happened to me for practicing witchcraft is that that slate was wiped, cre wiped clean and allowed, you know, a new view, a, a different lens to look at all different types of things, different ways of practicing magic, um, not being immediately put off by things that or totally different and stuff I never thought about before. And I think for some of us, I mean, it's just a lot of the things, for instance, um, practicing um, like hexing, we'll start there, hexing, that sort of stuff. Just the, the whole process of hexing and, um, you know, baneful magic and <laughs> revenge spells and all that sort of stuff. It's not, that I'm, I'm not saying that that's something you should kind of go deep into because it's counterproductive. If you're, using that type of energy why not use it for something positive at least for yourself right rather than um you know try to get at somebody or get at something the best revenge is you doing well so getting learning about that and and not being so scary understanding that you can protect yourself or understanding that um basically you can practice the magic and if you do it right there's I don't want to say there's there aren't any repercussions, but there aren't any direct repercussions. There is a way to go about practicing, but that's a whole other video on, on how to successfully hex. I think I might actually do that because I'm again I have an open and understanding view when it comes to different types of paths and different types of magics. I, I don't um, hold my you know put my nose up to it and. Um, you know, I don't even like the term dark magic and stuff like that. So just, you know, I'll say bane for hexing and revenge spells, that sort of stuff. But anyway, just even understanding it can be done successfully, you know, without the threefold law. <laughs> uh, one of the other things that I love is that love spells don't have to be about somebody else. They can be about self-love. That's great. Uh, it's helped. <laughs> I don't have to spend as much money going to a therapist, right? I, not that I, I'm saying you don't have, you don't need to go if you're practicing witchcraft. But let me tell you, part of practicing witchcraft is getting to know yourself. You have to know yourself, the ugly parts, the shadow side, 
the shadow self. You have to be in tune with it. Doesn't mean you like it all. Doesn't mean it's your favorite. You know, like um, peeling back um, the, the band aid and seeing the ugly scars. What was left? It's okay. They heal. You know, the the scars there. You know, just you have to kind of get accustomed to it. It's it's part of who you are. Dress it up. You know, dress that part of yourself up that you don't love so much. But learning to really know myself and um, know what I need and what kind of keeps me going, what makes me tick and how to reinforce that and um, how to uplift myself. Self-love spells are great for that. Oh my gosh. I, <laughs> I was doing it without even realizing it years ago. Meditation to me is a, an act of self-care. Just learning to sit still with yourself especially right now i'm seeing a lot of people are struggling with just being with their own thoughts um and i i mean i understand it but i i, I don't i don't get it <laughs> i i understand but i don't get it because I, I i like to meditate i'm okay with hearing myself think out loud whether i'm talking to myself out loud or just you know in my head or you know just shutting down the thoughts and maybe uh focusing on a singular thought for the purposes of meditation, I'm okay with all of that. I, I find it a little strange that people struggle. What are you afraid of about yourself? Maybe you need to do more self-love spells. Um, I, I appreciate it. And there's so much going on right now in the witchcraft community, books, literature, resources for witchy self-care. That's, that's a hot topic right now. So you should be able to find things um, to sort of reinforce that for you. So. That's one of the ways that witchcraft has definitely changed me is understanding how love spells work. It's not always about somebody else. It's, it could be about you. And I do a lot of love spells for myself and inner peace and healing and all that sort of stuff. Not that there's something broken, but as we go about day-to-day -day lives, our day-to-day -day lives, things are happening. Um, and watching the news is tough right now. And my heart is breaking. So yeah, that that's the kind of healing I'm into right now. You know, just not making myself closed off and cold to what's happening in the world, but to still practice compassion, but not fall apart because so much of that, after a while, you, you kind of get beat down emotionally. I don't want to be like that. That's why the self love spells come into play. Okay. Ah, <laughs> uh, the other thing that I learned especially as far as certain magics is sex magic so I think we all are you know okay back in the day when I was little I they would have movies out and I think or I saw they were reruns of movies because I think they were old by the time I was seeing about they would replay them on TV where it was like always about like some satanic cult <laughs> and um, they were always going to do a, if it was a ritual it was always going to be a sex ritual so um, when I first heard about sex magic many years ago, honestly, that's the first thing that came in my head. Those old movies, like those old horror movies where, you know, there's some girl laid out um, on some sort of a stone temple or something and all these people were robed and that was sex magic, a sex ritual. So that's what I thought. But um, my first experience was Wicca. So I learned about the various holidays. I learned about sky clad. So I was like, oh, that definitely, you know, changed my thinking. Um, or <laughs> I would say, you know, set me on the right path because that was just wrong information, you know, but sex magic and the power of it. I think it's one of, one of the more powerful magics that you can practice because there is raw organic energy that you are going to be able to conjure and then release and the thing is that's something where if there's someone else involved and they're willingly you know work especially if you're in a relationship you guys can really build and work on stuff together because you have a great manifesting tool you know to practice your magic so that's something i'm very grateful for and for learning within witchcraft because it's very powerful i you know i belong to a lot of different groups and i hear people talking about you know the things that they do as far as sex magic and how it's working um and they use it for money you know for money spells you know you it's in remember it's the energy of the sex uh that you're going to build but the intention and the focus is to take that energy into whatever it is that you want so if it's money um whatever it is some people are using it for all different types of stuff remember it's all about the energy and then the mind the focus you know melding all that together so 
ah, good thing to learn. <laughs> don't, don't, um, don't think that's something, and, and by the way, you can do that even if you're solo, as you know, so it is still something that you can uh, work on as a solitary. The other thing that I'm just kind of like super grateful as far as even being on this path is the type of people that I come across. A lot more open-minded people, uh, people who are in different types of relationships, whether it's same sex or um, same sex poly and, you know, or whatever, you know, just variations of, of different types of families and relationships. So that's been enlightening. And I'm glad that I've had experiences where I've come across these people and I'm able to come across them in a way that it's not like um, I have to say, hmm, that's interesting. Look how that works. It's more like I don't think about it. These are just people and this is what their situation is. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's, you know, nice. Oh, let me meet so-and-so. Oh, and this is your so-and-so too? And that one? You know. Okay, and your kids? That's great. You know, it's not a big deal. None of it, it it's not a big deal. And that, that openness makes that possible and that divorce of you know um the more uh i guess structured religions or you know christianity and all that and so forth those types of religions because that's not how i think anymore and it's taken years to undo that is why i'm able to kind of flourish and be a little bit more open and be more accepting uh doesn't mean it changes anything about me and my relationship and how you know what I want just like I'm not trying to change them I'm not even thinking like that they're just you know Bob and Sue and Jan you know that's it that <laughs> I just see the people and I'm talking to the people I'm not obsessed about what their day-to-day -day lives are like as you know a Polly or Sam and uh, Dan I'm not worrying about how that's working or Sally and Jane I'm not worried about how their situation is working out I'm not concerned about that I'm you know, I just see the people and we're talking about witchcraft stuff and it's cool and I want to just have that dialogue. So gratefully, um, I don't think in that lens. I'm not constantly thinking somebody's going to be condemned to hell. Huh. Which leads me to the next thing. Um, I don't believe in a hell. I don't believe in a heaven. <laughs> to each his own. I tried to get on board with the Wiccan uh, Summerlin concept if you're familiar with practicing wicca that's a thing summerlin it's like uh heaven <laughs> i'm not i try to get on board with that i can't the more i understand and the ancestral realm the more i'm in touch with it it's hard for me to picture a heaven it's hard for me to accept that it doesn't make sense to me seems a little boring too and what was ah, then I got questions what was the point of it all practicing witchcraft has made it so that I can look at that from a, a view not scary there's no fear um, and really just and, and I'm not looking for someone else to tell me this by the way and answer these questions this is more about me asking myself and what do I think because it ultimately it matters what I'm willing to accept and what I think I could be presented with a bunch of information as I had been growing up people told me things all the time um, and then along this path, people have told me things I just said when I was following Wicca, uh, you know, Summerlin, that's, that's the answer. That's what happens. And I'm like, well, that doesn't make any sense either. First off, it sounds really close to what we talk about when we say heaven. So, um, practicing witchcraft has made it possible for me to ask those big questions and not be freaked out. Just asking myself and not be freaked out. So there was a time I would have been freaked out. I wouldn't have... I would have put mental blocks to not go too far down the rabbit hole because the next thought is, well, what happens when you die? And, you know, for some of us, the concept of nothingness is even scarier. Nothing, you're just dead. It's the same thing that happened to you before you were born. You didn't exist. That's the end of it. That's a little free, you know. I think we're wired to not think like that. Um, my answer to all of that is um, I think that there's something bigger than what we have understanding of and I believe energy never dies and we're energy so we go into the ethers and the reason I'm able to contact the, the people that came before me that I descend from the reason I'm able to contact them is because their their essence lives forever um, it, it's always present so yeah 
the other thing, which leads me to the next thing, is ancestors. Oh gosh, practicing the best. I've benefited the most from practicing witchcraft because of uh, understanding ancestor reverence and, and just including them as much as I can in my life. Um, I, I, it's not every day. I don't have a certain thing I do every single day. It, I mean, I, and I'm just being honest, most days, but not every single day. Because some days things don't go that way. What if you're, you're not home or something else is happening? But I make a, I don't stray too long from having a connection and reaching out to them. Sometimes I'll just pull out my tarot cards. If I don't, um, I'm kind of like, I don't want to say I'm bored because that sounds not so nice but it's more like if I'm in a space of like indifference about everything I'm kind of in, in, in you know feeling indifference that's the best way and I'll pull out my cards and I'll just let them talk to me because at this point I'm not really high strung about anything I'm not really feeling down I'm kind of in this weird place um, which lately I, I've been feeling <laughs> those moments so I'll pull out my cards and um, say talk to me it's a great time for me to receive some information because I'm kind of just like existing <laughs> in this moment. I'm not really uh, feeling anything. And you know, when I get like that, which is okay, sometimes I kind of just float out like that. But uh, if you're doing a lot of that, this disconnected feeling of indifference, uh, yeah, you don't want to do that all the time. So that's when I'm like, okay, get, get with it, you know, pull out the cards and have a conversation. And sometimes it's something in just in my head. I go in my head to this place where I'm contacting them and then I'll do the, I'll ask a question in my head and then I'll do the cards and that's the answer. Other times I may speak out loud. Uh, speaking out loud to myself, practicing witchcraft, ooh, it has made it possible to be very comfortable and this is not something new, I've been doing this for some time, but to speak out loud and not, you know, not, oh, I sound crazy or something like that. No, talk out, I talk out loud. Um, I remember my mom used to always joke, oh, it's not, it's okay to talk to yourself. It's when you start answering yourself back when, when there's a problem. Well, the problem, <laughs> because I, I do that too. And I, it's just, uh, instead of, you know, just, I'm home alone most of the time. So that really doesn't matter, honestly. But even if people are in the house, I'll still talk out loud. It helps, it helps to have that dialogue sometimes. I am a talker, I'm somebody who likes to talk. I'm expressive, I love writing as well, so I'll it, translate that to that as well. But I enjoy speaking out. So if I want to have a conversation with a deity, I will be talking <laughs> and having a conversation and listening and waiting for some sort of divine symbol or you know a thought Form that pops in my head where I know it wasn't me it, it was coming from them um, yeah I'm open to that I love being even aware of this sort of stuff I can remember a time going through life when you know you say things like I don't know what made me do that or I just had a feeling or um I don't know it, it's just I just something just said to go to go you know do that or go tell her or go do this for him or whatever I don't have a that there's not a question mark on something or someone or somehow I know exactly who when what where who, I know what's going on I still marvel at it I still find it um, exciting when those op when those things happen but I know there's no you know guessing of wonder what that was I do know what it was <laughs> I invite them I invite uh, various spirits in to talk and to commune with me um, fairly often so I'm, I'm open for discussion it's, you know we have an open door policy so I always know but I, I like I said I still marvel I still find excitement when those opportunities uh, arise but I digress <laughs> so witchcraft has changed my life for in a lot of positive ways so I'm going to just quickly touch on some negative stuff. I don't have much. It's not a long list because honestly, I don't feel like um, there hasn't been anything really negative, but it has made it increasingly difficult to sometimes, if I'm being honest, don't judge me, listen to people who follow basically any of those big three religions, usually the, the first two. Y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> But um, it's hard to sometimes just listen to them. I practice a tolerance 
24-7. I am bombarded with imagery, posts, Facebook, Instagram, whatever, <laughs> you know, TV. I am constantly bombarded. It's the pr predominant religion in this country. I totally get that. I understand that. And I am tolerant, respectfully. So when I'm talking to an auntie, a cousin, a friend, I don't want to hear that anymore. Especially if you know I'm not about that life. Just shut up. I don't want to hear it. Shut up. Stop telling me stuff. Stop saying, you know, you're allowed to be you. I'm not saying people can't, you know, express themselves and all that. Because I just said I was tolerant. But not all the time. Sometimes, I can, can we just talk about something else? Do you know how hard it is for me to suppress what I'm thinking? For instance, the more I listen to you and I'm getting messages in my head saying, you know, tell them this or tell them that. Some say you tr and you're trying to find a way to tell people a message or if you had a dream or something like that without spooking them. So you're giving them the, the light version when you really want to go all in, but you don't want to sound crazy. Yeah. Witchcraft is dead. This is the fault of witchcraft. This is why <laughs> this is happening to me because if I didn't know that, none of this would be happening. Um, so that's a negative. Uh, the other negative is I, so I feel lonely and isolated at times. In this in this craft over the years sometimes you just want to be free you know you want to have your crystals some some of us have crystal jewelry you want to wear your witchy jewelry um, you want to wear certain symbols if you have tattoos you know um, on you that rep it, clearly it represents that you're at least we'll just say pagan um, you know if you your home if you have an altar sitting out and you have candles and all you know Things that obviously would say, hey, 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 I'm a witch, or I practice witchcraft. Or the books on your bookshelf in your house, that was an issue for me. And you just want people to know you and accept you. And it's okay if they know and they understand, hey, that's a part of you. But the part that just wants to talk about recipes or talk about the kids or, you know, talk about where we're going out on Friday when we all hang out with the husbands and or whatever, you... you want that and you don't want to constantly be um, looked at through this lens of she practices witchcraft don't put a curse on me you know with the jokes yeah witchcraft has done that to me <laughs> it's made it so that um when i want to i don't want to deal with that so i look for people like myself to hang out with and there's not many of us it ever seems in one concentrated area i don't live in a huge city um and I also, no offense, I don't always want to hang around a bunch of 20 year olds who are practicing magic. <laughs> I'm okay some of the time, but not, not often. Because we're going to re, it's not even about the levels of magic and witchcraft and all this. It's not about levels. Please don't take it to mean that way. It's more about take the witchcraft piece out of it. I, t there, I am in my mid 40s, people. <laughs> I have um, a 20 year old, I have a 24 year old, so soon to be 24 year old. So it is, I'm going to go into mom mode no matter how mature you think you are because I have come across some people, I've, I'm, I'm speaking from experience, I've come across some young people who are, they are very mature. They are very um, well spoken on, on all aspects of their life. They're, they're able to articulate how they feel feel about it and they can provide information I a perspective I wasn't thinking about maybe because of the youthfulness so it's just a fresher approach and I'm I'm open to that I am open to that what I don't want <laughs> or what I I'm going to act like your mom uh, let me just be clear no matter what you say no matter what you do I am very very aware of the number of years that I have on you. And when you're talking with youthful enthusiasm about something that is great about witchcraft and, you know, or something that's not so great or whatever it is, it is very hard for me not to go into mom mode and start not scolding you. I, I don't mean that because being a mom doesn't mean always disciplining and scolding your kids. But the other part, you know, the mom who wants to give you some mom advice, <laughs> the mom who wants to tell you, maybe if you stop getting all those tattoos, you might have a better chance of meeting the type of guy you want or maybe if you you know just um I know you like the colors in your hair but maybe I'm just saying because you want to get into this really serious type of work maybe you want to do that and you know I know from experience people don't want to hear that or 
<laughs> Maybe this bum has you guys as both of his girlfriends or wives, and it seems really cool, but he's a bum and he's disrespectful. I'm speaking from experience. <laughs> so anyway, witchcraft has done that to me. No, actually, that's just me with anybody in their 20s. But anyway, but in the wishy community, um, in situations like that, yeah, it definitely, um, it can feel isolating. It can, it, you feel, det you know, you want, I want to reach out, I want to, but at the same time, like I said, it's, you know, get, like, where's my old crew? Where's my older lady crew like myself? Um, or males <laughs> at this point, I'm not picky on that. Um, a bunch of us, that would be nice. I'm cool with a couple young people in there because like I said, I like, uh, I love dealing with my, my own children who are 20 and 24. I love talking to them. I think they, I probably talk to them more than I talk to anybody else, especially my daughter. She and I are super close. So I'm constantly hearing her views and um, I don't over talk her or come with the mom advice all the time so I can't control it. Uh, but she's one person. If you put me in a group of them, the chances of me controlling it, it's a problem. And I blame witch, witchcraft for that. So there you go. <laughs> That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Outside of that, I don't have a whole lot of negatives. Just sometimes it gets lonely. Um, and um, my tolerance level is consistently being tested. Like right now, you know, with COVID-19 happening and people were saying, you know, this is God's will or, or in reverse, um, you're, you're protected because of God, so you won't get it. On the flip side, some of us are a little cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs too because I'm seeing people saying, oh, my ancestors got me, so I'm going to go out and continue to engage in risky um, activity because my ancestors got me. I've seen that. I've seen several people say that, and I'm like, pause. First off, your ancestors, if they're giving you knowledge that they're going to protect you, it's on you to actually um, kind of do your part as well. Your part is not putting yourself in a risky situation to test that protective. That your behind is protected if you stay your butt in the house. But I see the mom comes out. <laughs> but that's enough of that. But seriously, that I don't have a lot of negatives. Um, about practicing witchcraft. I really don't. I haven't had any spells that backfired in a really detrimental way. I had one spell I did and I didn't know more about protection at that time where there were some things that happened, but it wasn't like life threatening, nothing that horrible, nothing that I couldn't fix. Um, outside of that, I really haven't had any, you know, evil things, you know, thrown at me. I did get haunted by an entity. But again, it went back to protection. That's why I'm serious about protection magic because of lessons learned. Um, I, I silly, very silly invited an a entity to follow me into my, my home. <laughs> and it haunted me for some time. But that's how I learned about ancestors. So it was still a positive. So I can't even say that was a negative thing. Uh, but yeah, that, that's my, my thing on witchcraft. This is, um, Kind of how it changed me it's again i'm more open-minded um, i'm open to so much learning i it, it's helped me uh, process anxiety more it's helped me process um acceptance it's helped me in so many ways so yeah pro wishcraft thanks for watching <laughs> this is mika and uh go ahead and like the video please if you've enjoyed this content i really appreciate it and if you have not subscribed please um go ahead and subscribe <laughs> and if you have again pre i appreciate it seriously thank you very much i i really appreciate it all right thanks